word of God. If you have your Bibles with you, and I thank uh, Kishore and Pratibha, amen, glory to your Lord, hallelujah, for looking after me, amen, hallelujah, and doing some outline work, doing some outline work for me, glory to your Lord, hallelujah. Well, I bring you greetings from my church, from my family, and uh, my daughter got, got married on the 5th of July. Oh, it was a big, 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 uh, big occasion. Amen. We expected about 2,000 to 250, but we got 3,500 people. <laughs> the hall was not enough. Amen. But thank the Lord, his name was glorified and magnified. Amen. Because in India, marriages are big. <laughs> it, it's not small. Amen. Glory to your Lord. Hallelujah. And if you, I think so. Glory to Lord. Okay. I would like you to turn with me uh, to Second Kings, the fourth chapter, in reading the second verse. Amen. The second verse is a story about the widow who was in debt and the creditors came to take away her son. Amen. And uh, she, Elisha comes over there. And so Elisha said unto her, her, What shall I do for you? And tell me, what do you have in your house? And this morning, amen, because I, we are live on, uh, on the YouTube, I just want to, amen, uh, give you some notes and give you some points that you would understand my teaching. Amen. Let's go, let's pray before we enter into the Word of God. Father, we thank you for praise and for worship. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are here in the midst of us. We thank you before the foundations of the world that you have chosen, Lord, this time that I should be here in this church, Lord, this beautiful church, your children. Lord, that uh, your word would be magnified and glorified. Your Holy Spirit, God, we thank you that you are the carrier of God's word. Your word will not return to you void, but accomplish the work that you had sent it forward to. We believe for miracles to happen. You confirm your word with signs and wonders. We thank you that you are here in the midst of us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen, amen. and amen. Let's give the, the choir and the, those who play the hand. Amen. Wonderful praise and worship. Amen. Especially those on the keyboard, the drums, the singers. And I love the guy who played the bass. Very good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Very talented. Glory to your Lord. Those who are leading the praise and the worship. I just love praise and worship. Amen. It prepares our hearts for the word of God. Amen. And so if you see in the, in the, in the, in the books of uh, Second Kings, it says there in the fourth chapter that they were going through a famine. Amen. They were going through a rough patch in life. And this woman, she came to Elisha and said, Don't you know that my husband was a good man? Amen. And the whole town was going through famine. And if you see in the Bible, there are eight famines. Amen. Because when you see eight, it speaks of the covenant. Amen. And if you see in Genesis... The 12th chapter and the 9th verse, it speaks there was a famine in the days of Abraham. Amen. And if you see in Genesis, the 26th chapter, and the first verse, if you read, there was a famine in the days of Isaac. And then if you go on in Genesis, the 41st chapter, and if you read, you know, the 25th verse and all those verses to 35, if you see in the day, days of Joseph, there was a famine. Amen. And then if you read the book of Ruth, and uh, Ruth 1, 1, if you see the, in the days of Ruth, there was a famine. Amen. And then if you see in the, in the book of Kings, 1 Kings, if you read the 17th chapter in the days of Elijah, there was a famine. And then if it, you go on in the book of uh, 2 Kings, if you read the 4th chapter or the, and in the 8th chapter too, there was a famine in the days of Elisha. Amen. 
And then afterwards, if you read Kings to uh, Samuel, 2 Samuel, the 21st chapter, and if you read the first one, in the days of David, there was a famine. Amen. And there's going to be a famine, amen, in the last days. And the word of God says in Amos, in the 8th chapter and the 11th verse, could you put it up please, amen? There is going to be a famine, not because of water, not because of food, but there is going to be a famine of the lack of the word of God. And the word of God says that people will travel from this sea to that sea. They will travel the oceans and it will not be found for, they will not find it. So when there is teaching, when there is the word of God, it's time that we begin to ponder upon the word of God. It's time that we begin to meditate upon the word of God. It's time that we begin to fall in love with the word of God. It's time that we spend time in the word of God. I encourage you, fall in love with the word of God. Spend time in the word of God. In the morning when you get up, whenever you are, amen, just begin to read and read and ask God, Lord, give me a hunger for your word. That's why Job said, more than physical food, I desired your word. I desired your word. Ask God to give you a hunger for his word. Because heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. You want strength, you want health, you want whatever you want, it's the word of God. When I was in this world, you know, every day I, I visited the doctor. Every day I had allergy. And you know, in England you have, you know, funny allergies. <laughs> Praise the Lord, hallelujah. You got peanut allergy, you got, uh, amen, milk powder allergy. The, I, I went to a place and there is even banana <laughs> allergy. Praise the Lord, you have... Ish, if you have banana in your house, they get allergy. Praise the Lord. Funny allergies. You got diseases or demons that are funny demons in, in, in England. We got different de demons and diseases in India. But here you got different. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And I had allergy. Amen. Whatever I ate, I just began to vomit. And you know, I, uh, doctors could not figure it out. It entered into leukemia. And then I was dying in 82. For five years, I did not eat chicken. The doctor said, you eat chicken, you'll die. And I was dying. Uh, yogurt and rice, milk, and you know, these are the things that I used to eat. I was afraid I was dwindling down. Amen, just skin and bone, I could not walk. And uh, I, I said, that's up, I, my time is up. I remember in 82, I was born again, but still I was sick because I did not know the word of God. Amen. When, because when Jesus said it is finished, God did not leave anything undone for us. Amen. When he said it is finished, amen, sin, sickness, and poverty, and the curse could not go beyond the cross. Amen. So God did not only just die. Jesus did not only just die for your sin, he died for your poverty. He died for your curse, and he died for your sickness. 1 Peter 2.24, you were healed by his stripes, not going to be healed. Genesis 3.13, it says there that the, the, that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentile. Jesus was made a curse for you. Amen. So we're no more under the curse. Corinthians 8, 9, it says there, He was made poor that we might be made rich. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says there, he was, he was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. And this morning I encourage you, no sickness, nothing should touch us. Amen. The devil might try to put something, but be careful what you say. It's what you say you will have. And this morning... Amen. Many people are in trouble is because what they have said. Amen. I, last time I was here, two years back, amen, as soon as I came, you know, Kisho and uh, Pratibha was telling me about uh, Glory Sophie and uh, uh, Shabash. Amen. Shabash. Amen. I, I said, Lord, I thank you for their hospitality. And just before I left, because I said, Lord, what should I give them? 
I just want to bless them. And I said to Sophie, just put your hands upon your, your, your stomach, I said, upon you, and I will pray for you. And as I was praying for her, I told her, I said, the next time I come, I believe that you, I will have a word. I will see God's blessing. And they believed it. I have seen people 15 years, 25 years without children. And I said to them, Lord, just speak to them. What shall I give them? And the Lord said, I will bless them. Amen. I have seen miracle after miracle after miracle. You know why? Because I serve a God that is a God of the impossible. In Romans 4, 17, he calleth those things that be not as though they were. In 23, it says there in, in, in the fourth chapter, the 23rd verse, it was not only imputed for Abraham, but for us also. For us also. Come on. We serve a God of the impossible. And this morning, I encourage you, believe it. Believe it. And you will begin to see things happening in your life. I remember in 84, I was praying one day, and I heard the voice of the Lord say, Arise and eat. Arise and eat if you believe my word. The doctor was saying, Yeah, I was dying. Amen. The fact is, I was dying, but the truth is what the word of God says. And God says, Arise and eat. I was in Hyderabad. I was playing for the street hockey team, but I was dwindling down. That was the end of my ch the chapter. Amen. I rose up and went to Alpha Hotel and ate two biryanis that day. From that, from that day, that day till now, amen, I haven't seen the doctor of that disease. Amen. I don't know where that disease ran away because he is my healer. Amen. And this morning I encourage you, you might go through a phase in life. You might be going through things in life. The town was going through a famine. She was going through a famine. And the crisis is she, she had lost her husband. And she was in debt. And the debtors came and were about to take her children. According to the law, the word of God says, amen, glory to you, Lord, hallelujah. According to Exodus, the 20th chapter, and if you read the 5th and the 6th verse, if you had to pay a debt... The word of God says the debtor could come and take your children till the debt was paid. Till you pay it back, they could come and take your children. And this morning, not only having her husband, losing her husband, she was in debt and her children were going away from her. The word of God says they were in a famine. The whole town was in a famine. And the word of God says, the first thing I would like to present to you, glory to your Lord, hallelujah. She said, don't you know that my husband was a godly man? If you read 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, and if you read the third, the fourth, and the fifth verse, her husband's name was Obedia. And this man miraculously from the table of Jezebel and Ahab, he was feeding a hundred prophets. In a time of famine... Amen. For more than three and a half years. More than three and a half years, she was taking off the table of Jezebel. He was taking off the table of Jezebel and feeding these prophets. So he was a godly man. Amen. So what happens is he was telling her, don't you know my husband was a godly man? And this morning I encourage you. Amen. We have rich inheritance. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Somewhere down the line, your father, your grandfather, your great-grandmother, or your great-grandfather would have been praying for you. Yeah. You suddenly don't come to the Lord. Suddenly you don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to church. Yeah. Amen. And we have godly inheritance. Amen. Your mother, your father, your grandfather... Somewhere down the line, there will be a great inheritance in you. That's why when Paul said to Timothy, he said, share up the gifts that are within you. He said, don't forget your grandmother. That faith was in your grandmother. That faith was even in your mother. And not only in your mother, that faith also is in you. 
He began to, you know, build Timothy. He says, not only your faith, but it's down the line. It's down the line. Amen. Glory to your Lord. Hallelujah. So I encourage you this morning, somewhere down the line, there is someone that has prayed for you. There is someone that has interceded on behalf of you. Someone that has cried out to the Lord for you. Amen. Never forget it. Never forget you got a great inheritance in the Lord. And she began to remember or remind Elisha and said, Don't you know that my husband was a godly man? And he asked her, he said, What do you have in your house? Amen. What do you have in your house? Amen. There was a connection to a miracle. Amen. And he said, what do you have in your house? She said, only a little oil. A little oil. You know, I come from the land. The place that I come from is Widgerwater. And Widgerwater is the place for mangoes. You come in summer, the whole of the Widgerwater will smell with mangoes. You walk down the streets, you'll smell of mango. Mango pickle, everything is mango, mango, mango. Amen. So this place was the land of olive trees. It was the land of olive. It was on the northern side of Israel. It was called Zidon. And Zidon is the land of oil. Amen. That's why what was left in our house was oil. Turn with me. I'll show you that scripture. Glory to Turn with me to Deuter Deuteronomy. Amen, because this was the tribe. She belonged to the tribe of Asher. Amen, turn with me to Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter and the 24th verse. 24th verse, it says there, And Asher shall dip his feet in oil. Amen. This was the land, because I had been to the land of Israel. Amen, and you know it's God's country. You know God's hands upon that country. Amen, in the days of Jesus... If someone had two olive trees, they were rich people. Yeah. Amen. Because oil was everything to them. Oil was everything to them. Glory to the Lord. And it's still. So I encourage you, this morning, not only just physical oil, I'm talking about spiritual oil. Yeah. Amen. I'm talking about spiritual oil. If you're not spirit-filled, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, ask God, Lord, fill me with your spirit. I need to speak in tongues. That's where the power is. That's where the power is. Build yourself up on the most holiest faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. In Jude 1.20, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Begin to just pray in tongues. When you pray in English, the devil knows what you're praying. But when you pray in tongues, praise the Lord, something's going to happen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you're tapping into the source. Amen. Amen. That's where the power lies. Amen. Something's going to happen. I encourage you this morning. We pray a lot in tongues till the roof will fly off. Amen. You hear us in our church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Kruma, my man. You got to stop them from praying in tongues. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this morning I encourage you, pray more. Pray more in the Holy Spirit. Sing in the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you wish someone in the morning, Amen. Don't say just praise the Lord. Amen. Shake hands in tongues. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your Lord Jesus. Amen. I was traveling from Widgerwater to Bangalore one day. And I heard these guys talk about Sai Baba. And they were from America. And they went on and on and on and on and on. Praise the Lord. I said, if these guys could, you know, talk about someone else, let me talk about Jesus. And I've got a loud voice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I began to speak in tongues in the bus. And praise the Lord. As I began to speak in tongues, all four of them started vomiting. Praise the Lord. They shut their mouths from Vigilwater to Bangalore. <laughs> and they said, how come we started, you know, it was vomiting at the same time? I knew what happened. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because when you pray in tongues, the power of God comes down. The power of God comes down. I encourage you this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto man, but unto God. 
Amen, Corinthians 4 to 14 2. Amen. Can I encourage you this morning? Amen. When you go to prayer, pray in tongues. Amen. I need to see her. Amen. Praise God. I, you know, sometimes we go, I went to a church to preach. Pastor Joel Thomas. Amen. They're all, you know, uh, a lot of colored people there. Praise the Lord. The first thing when I got onto the stage, he gave me. Glory to Lord, a towel. I said, what's the towel for? He said, to sweat it out, brother. <laughs> he said, to sweat it out. Amen. You can't hold them back. They're jumping around. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And after the preaching was over, you get nearly 500 you have to pray for. Amen. It's time that we become thirsty for God. What do you have in your house? A little oil. I encourage you, do not be ashamed of what you have. Because we all have giftings. We're all called into the kingdom of God. The calling to do ministry is different. We have all have ministry. We have, amen, different types of giftings. What you have, I don't have. But when we all come together, we fit in as the body of Christ. Amen. So I encourage you, never be ashamed of what you have. Amen. We all play a part in the kingdom of God. We all play a part in the kingdom of God. And this morning, the word of God says, what do you have? A little oil. That's enough. That's enough. And the word of God says, glory to the Lord. The third thing, he said, go and borrow. Go and borrow all the pots, the empty pots in the village. Go and borrow. Just imagine her sons. Amen. Who went to borrow. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. The people would have been laughing. Amen. The people would have laughed. Amen. They would have heard the debtors come every one month. Amen. Where is the money? Where is the money? Where is the money? Amen. And when the sons were going and borrowed, they would have laughed. You know what? Faith is an act. Faith is an act this morning. When God tells you something to do, do it. Amen. Blessed is the man that puts his trust in the Lord. Amen. Cursed is the man that puts his trust in man. And this morning I encourage you. Faith, when you say, I have faith, Show me your faith, poor James said, and I will show you my works. Amen. Faith must have work. Faith without works, it's dead. Amen. The just shall live by faith. And this morning I encourage you, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more you begin to hear the word of God, the more you begin to speak the word of God, faith will begin to rise within you. Amen. Faith will begin to rise within you. I remember when I was in Bible college, they made me the leader. And we were, you know, two months in Bible college, and then, they, you know what I mean, they took us for, you know, for, for crusades. And all the thing that they taught to us was binding and loosening. Amen. We did not know much. I did not know how to pray. Amen. They said, just put your hands and pray in the name of Jesus. Come out. In the name of Jesus, we bind you. In the name of Jesus, we loosen you. And after the meetings was over, they were, they were praying for people. 150 of them which came from Australia and New Zealand. Amen. And so I was the leader. They said, Hamilton, why didn't you come up on the stage and pray? pray? And there was a guy that had a spirit of karate. He was, hoo-ha, hoo-ha, he was making a noise. Amen. I did not know to pray. I went there and I closed my eyes and I began to pray for him. And suddenly he smacked, smacked me. He walloped me. <laughs> I went down on the ground, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I got up and I smacked him, praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> he went down on the ground. <laughs> then the Lord says, that's not the way you do it. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, Lord. And I began, to, you know what happens? I learned to pray. But one thing I learned, when I pray for demons, I'll never close my eyes. Amen, I'll open my eyes and pray. Amen. God taught me a lesson. Don't close your eyes and pray. Open your eyes and pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But what happened is I learned to pray. Amen. Pray for a pimple, it becomes a boil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But what happens is ne I never gave up. 
and never gave up in life. And this morning, I encourage you, never give up. Amen. Keep on. Keep on. Faith is an act. Amen. Faith is an act. And the word of God says that they went and brought all the pots. And while they were bringing the pots and as they were pouring, amen, they began to fill up. It began to fill up. It began to fill up. It began to fill up. And the word of God says when they brought the pots back, Elisha said to the, to the children, the, both the boys and to the woman, close the door. Close the door. And this morning I encourage you, we have to close the door to criticism. We have to close the door to doubt. We have to close the door to words. Because what happens is many a times words will dampen your spirit. Words will dampen your spirit. And there are many good people that are doing nothing in the churches today. Because of someone had said some word to them and they've just given up. They haven't closed the door to the enemy. And this morning I encourage you, close the door. Close the door. If Mary had gone to someone else, doubt would have entered into her life and the miracle of Jesus being born would not have happened. She went to Elizabeth, someone that was senior. Someone that had an experience. Amen. And when she went to Elizabeth, the word of God says, the children in the womb there, it says, leap for one another with joy. You know why? Because they were going to be encouraged of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He went to someone senior. So whenever you are in, in a problem, don't run to someone else who doesn't know about the Holy Spirit. No one, someone who doesn't know the word of God. Run to your pastor. Run to someone that is elder. Who knows the word of God. Yes. Don't let people dampen your spirit. Go to someone that will lift you up. Elevate you. Amen. Elevate the word of God. And say brother you are on the right track. You are on the right track. We serve a God of the impossible. You are on the right track. Amen. Amen. So be careful of words. Be careful of people that will dampen your spirit. Close the door. When Jesus went to the, the house of Cyrus in Matthew, the fifth chap chapter, and the ninth chapter, can mark the fifth chapter, he went inside there. He pushed them all outside. He closed the door. He closed the door because they will not understand their criticism, their doubt. Amen. He could not do much work because they did not believe in his hometown. Amen. When the disciples, when Peter went to, to Doris's, Dorcas's house, what did he do? He closed the door. He closed the door. Turn to your partner and say, close the door. Come on. Close the door. Glory to your Lord. Hallelujah. We got to close the door to doubt. We got to close the door. Amen to words of this word. We got to open it to the word of God. Open up to the Spirit of God. Amen. That the Spirit of God would lead us. Amen. I encourage you this morning, close the door. Then the next thing it goes on to say. The Word of God says that she, Amen, came back to, to Elisha and said, Amen, there are no more pots. There are no more pots. I want you to get this in your heart this morning. When God performs a miracle, when God blesses, he will always bless. He will always bless because we have a God that, is, a God that blesses. He doesn't put curses. He said, if you don't walk according to my word, this will happen. The devil will come. You know, when, when he, he said to him, when, when Adam sinned, you know what he said to Adam? He said, because of you, the earth will, will be cursed. Because you know, he, he had already blessed Adam. So he could not curse Adam. Amen. He could not curse Adam. So I encourage you. The word of God says that the oil kept on pouring, going. It was as they kept on pouring and pouring and pouring, the oil kept on and on and on. You know when the oil stopped? When they said from their mouth, Amen, there is no more pause. 
And then the word of God says that the oil ceased. It's what they said. It's not what God said. Amen. When they kept on pouring, the, the oil was flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. It stopped when they said there is no more pots. And the word of God says, and the oil ceased. Saints, I encourage you this morning. The word of God says in Proverbs, the 18th chapter, and if you read the 22nd and the 23rd verse, so from the 20th, it says there, Amen. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. A man's belly shall be satisfied by the words that he speaks. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Can I encourage you this morning? Amen. Be careful what you speak. When you're in this world, amen, your words mean nothing. But when you're in God's kingdom, what you speak will be established. <clears throat> Whatever you say will be established. And many a times we feed our allergies. We feed our problems. We feed our diseases is with the words that we have spoken. That's why the word of God says in Proverbs 6, 2, you were snared by your own words. In Telugu it's written, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You have been snared by your own words. You have put a net upon you. No one threw a net upon you. You have snared yourself. You have caught your own self with your words. And this morning I encourage you, be careful what you say. We should always be a positive people, not negative. Amen. That's why Job said, in Job... Glory to your Lord. Hallelujah. It says in, in Job, the 22nd chapter and the 28th verse, and you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Amen. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. That means what I mean. When you say something, it will happen. You know, the, you know when Jesus said, you know, whatsoever thou shalt ask the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. The actual translation of that is, if, if you have asked and it's not on this, on this earth, my Father will create it and give it to you. Because our God is a creator. Amen. When all doctors say no, our heavenly doctor says yes, I can do it. I can do it for you. I can do it for you. There's nothing too hard with God. The only thing that we have to do is just believe. Amen. Be careful what we say. Be careful what we say. It will be established. That's why the word of God says in Psalm 107 and the 20th word, he sent his word and he healed them. He sent his word and he healed them. And this morning I encourage you, saints of God, be careful what you say. Because when you say something, it's because we are born again of the spirit of God, whatever we say will be established. You can walk into, that's why in Luke, the 10th chapter and the 5th verse, he says that when you enter into someone's house, speak a blessing. <laughs> speak a blessing. Speak peace to that house. Speak peace to that family. Amen. Because what is spoken, my word shall not return to me void, but accomplish the work that I have sent it forward to. It will not come back void. It will establish itself. Amen. You can speak a blessing upon your nation, upon Sheffield. Amen. And say, Lord, we thank you. Bring them in. Bring them in. We speak a blessing over everybody that is here. And this morning, I encourage you. God's given you the power. God's given us the power. Amen. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. We are born again of that same spirit. Amen. Glory to you, Lord. We are born again of that same spirit. And I encourage you this morning, go about, amen, just praying for people. Go about on the streets and say, brother, could I speak to you? Could I pray for you? Amen, hallelujah. You make a difference. You're sowing the seed in their lives. One day, it will spring up. One day, it will happen. Amen. Just before I left, I went for a wedding. 
And I went for the wedding, uh, wedding and a, a woman came up to me. And she said, aren't you Pastor Hamilton? I said, yeah. And she said, 13 years ago, the doctors gave me up. 13 years ago, I was dying of cancer. And I, I remember this lady, she came, you know, with all the, the intravenous things, you know, inject, you know, the injection thing with tapes still on her arms. Amen. And someone told her in the hospital, go, go to Pastor Hamilton's church. Amen. Because when the doctors say, no, there's no chance at all, then the nurses, many of the nurses and doctors come to our church. And they say, go, go to Ham Pastor Hamilton's church. They pray for you. Praise the Lord. So when the doctors give them up, they bring them here. <laughs> they bring them here. Praise the Lord. So I prayed for the lady. Prayed for the lady. And I did not know. Amen. But the day we prayed, I mean, we interceded on behalf. Amen. She went home. God performed the miracle. After 13 years, she meets me and says, God touched me that day. God touched me that day. I remember there was some years back, the doctor, the, the NIMS hospital in Hyderabad gave up a woman and said, just give her what she wants to eat three days or one week, that's the end. And, all. and so what happens in just in front of my, my house, they were crying and crying. I said, what are you crying for early morning? Your mom, you know, the doctors gave her up. The doctor sent her home. She's dying. I said, you believe the doctor's words? We serve a bigger doctor. Amen. When all doctors say no, our heavenly doctor says yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayed for her. 25 years she's still living. And she's doing extra time too. Praise the Lord. Extra batting. Praise the Lord. I've seen miracle after miracle after miracle. My daughter fell from a three-story building when I was preaching about Jabez. The five prayers, the last prayer, Lord, that you protect me from all evil. I did not know it was my daughter that fell. A little boy left her and she fell to the ground. The lady that picked her up said the brains had come out, she had died. My wife ran down, wrapped her up in a sari. There was a, you know, by Satanar and Puram, there was a Mera Pauli clinic there. They took her to the Apple Institute. I said, don't run, don't run. We serve a God of the impossible. So we knelt down and we prayed, Lord, we have seen miracles. We have seen things happening in our lives. Lord, we believe for a miracle. Amen. By the time she went, into, they took x-rays, they came back. <clears throat> the doctor said, your God is a great God. Amen. Not a bone broken, not a fracture, and not even a scar. By the time we had gone down, God had performed a miracle. It's prayer. Amen. Amen. There's nothing too hard with God. We try to calculate God's with our thinking. We should get rid of our stinking thinking. Amen. Amen. Fill it up with the word of God. Fill it up with the word of God. Amen. Let it sink down 18 and a half feet or uh, inches. Yeah, 18 inches or 18 and a half. If not 18 and a half feet, you go down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to you, Lord. Fill it. Let it go down. Sink in your heart and say, Lord, I believe. When the word came, Cyrus said, why trouble is the master? Your, your daughter is done. Jesus said, only believe. Only believe. And this morning, I encourage you, the word of God says, the all stop." only because of her mouth. Amen. It's time that we begin to pour. Amen. Faith is an act. There was a man, I read a story once, he was on his rocking chair, and every morning he would say, I wish I was a millionaire on his rocking chair. And he never got out of that, of that rocking chair, and he never became a millionaire, because you know, when you say something, it's an act. You've got to get out of that rocking chair and say, Lord, I'm going to act it. Amen. I'm going to go forward. If you remain in the same thing, place, you will remain the same person. Yeah. This morning, I encourage you, when you say, Amen, Lord, I believe you've got to act upon it. The symptoms might be there, but you know, friend, your word changes. What you speak changes, amen. It's got to sink down in your spirit and say, Lord, I begin to see it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen in Hebrews 11.1. 1. 
And this morning, I encourage you. I encourage you. Amen. It will only stop. The oil only stop by their words. Amen. And then the word of God says, the sixth thing I want to share with you. Glory to your Lord. She went back to the man of God. She went back to the man of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Never forget what God has done in your life. Amen. The psalmist says in Psalm 103, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within him may bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me bless his holy name. All that is within me. Your kidneys, your stomach, your heart, your liver should be bouncing around when you praise God. Amen. Not only, praise the Lord, oh my soul, and be like Lot. Amen, Lot's wife. Amen. You should be bouncing around and jumping around and kicking. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My kidneys are moving. My heart is moving. Amen. You don't have to see a doctor. Your very heart do it good, the medicine. Amen. Your word, O Lord, in Proverbs 4, 21, is life to them that find it and health to all their flesh. Amen. Amen. It's medicine. It's a pill that you take. It's God's word. It's God's word. Amen. Whom do you believe this morning? Amen. Your word, in, my son, incline my words to your heart, your ears. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For it is life to them that find it and health to all their flesh. Amen. I encourage you this morning. God's word is health. Take the gospel, take the pill every day, and say, Lord, I stand upon it. Never forget what God has done in your life. I never forget what God has done in my life. Amen. Many people come to church, they be blessed, and they run away. They forget about what God's done in their lives. And this morning, I encourage you. Amen. It's time that you be thankful. It's time that we be thankful. The word of God says there were were 10 lepers. Amen. They were condemned people. No physician could help them unless divinely God healed them. They were separated from family. No family could touch them. The word of God says they were condemned to death. And 10 of them, when Jesus was going to Jerusalem, cried out, Son of David, have mercy upon us. And God said, go and shew thyself unto the high priest, because according to the custom... Amen, of Leviticus, the 14th chapter. The high priest should come out and, you know, inspect the the leper, and then he would go in after a lot of sacrifices. Amen. And the word of God says, glory to go and shoot themselves. They were still lepers. They were not healed. They were still lepers. Go back home and read it. The word of God says, as they went. In Telugu it says, Margam lo po chundaga. And as they went, they were healed. They were still lepers. They were still lepers. But as they went by faith, their lepers, he left them. I encourage you this morning, just begin to step out and say, Lord, I thank you. You might have it. You might be still in debt. You might be still in sickness. You might have BP, you might have sugar, but as you step out and say, Lord, I believe by faith, two, three steps and it's gone. Amen, it'll just begin to vanish. Amen, never forget what God has done in your life. Nine of them returned back home, but there was one which was a Samaritan. And he came back with a big and loud voice glorifying and magnifying God's word. He fell at the feet of Jesus and magnified and glorified God's name. He gave thanks unto the Lord. And you know what Jesus said to him? Where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? You know why? Because God expects us to be thankful. God expects us to be thankful. Amen. 
And this morning, I encourage you. We should be thankful for what God has done in our life. Today, we are seeing this day. It's God's grace and mercy. It's grace and mercy that is upon our lives. Amen that we are seeing this day. Many, you know, great men of God. Oh, amen. Rich men in this world. Athletes and different other things. You know, they haven't seen this day, many people. But today, God's keep, kept us alive. It's his grace. It's his mercy that's upon our lives. Amen. Last thing the word of God says. Amen. She went back to the man of God and said, what shall I do? And you know what he said to her? Sell the oil and get rid of your debt. Sell the oil and get rid of your debt. This morning there are many people, they leave it up and then they try to get rid of their debt. Debt brings a lot of turmoil. Debt brings a lot of tension. That brings a lot of things. Be careful that you don't enter into that. And it's very easy in England and the European countries because you don't handle your money. The only thing that you have is a 10-pounder or a 20-pounder. Amen. All is the plastic. Amen. And all the ATM cards. You push in and pull out. You don't know how, you're ta- how much you're taking out, <laughs> taking out or how much you got in the bank. Praise the Lord. Be careful. Sometimes, you know, it mounts up so much. I've known people that have, you know, this, it's a lovely thing to push it in and put it in and tap it. <laughs> Amen. And then after what happens, you find yourself and, you, you know, the bank sends you, you're, you're so much in debt. People have sold their houses, sold, sold everything. Because they haven't paid back their mortgage. Amen. Be careful that you don't fall into that trap. If you have it, spend it. But if you don't have it, please be careful. As Christians, amen, God is our provider. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. God supplies our needs, not our wants. Not our wants. So we got to be careful in these last days. Amen. It's God's blessing. We are God's kingdom. Amen. We should be an example to others. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When God gives it, Lord, I thank you for the blessing. I thank you for the blessing. Amen. He said, what shall I do with the oil? Go and sell it. Get rid of your debt. And you and your family live. It was the grace of God that was upon this family. You know, this, when I was reading the scripture, this is the fifth miracle of Elisha. The fifth miracle. And five always speaks about grace. Five always speaks about grace. When the tabernacle of Moses was five cubits in breadth and five cubits in length, it was a box, the altar. It speaks of grace. David, when he took, went to fight Goliath, he took five stones, not one stone. It speaks of grace. Five people ministered in the tabernacle of Moses. Moses and his four sons. It speaks of grace. The pool of Bethesda. Amen. It had five pouches. God gives for the edification of the church some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Fivefold ministry. Amen. The five wounds upon Jesus. Two in his hands, two in his legs, and one in his side. It speaks of the fivefold ministry. The grace of God that is upon us. Never forget, it's the grace of God. Jesus did not leave anything undone for us. That's why if you see, amen, that, that it was the grace of God upon Ruth's life. It was the grace of God that Abraham knew it was God's grace. Amen. He knew he had a relationship with God. It's God's grace. Job knew it was God's grace. They did not have the blood. They did not have the cross. Amen. But they believed it was God that was doing things on behalf of them. Amen. That's why Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I put my trust in him. I will put my trust in him. Amen. In Job 42, 5, it says there, Lord, I have heard of thee by here. But now mine eyes have seen thee. I've heard of you. But in what I went through, 
I have seen you. And this morning I encourage you before I close. Because we are Christians. We will go through things in life. We will go through things in life. But never ask God to take it away. You know why? Because till Jesus comes, things will come against us. We will go through things in life. But when, you, when you're going through things, don't say, Lord, take it away. Why is this happening to me? No. Ask God to give you the strength to go through it. Amen. Because when you go through it, you have a testimony to share. You have a testimony to share to someone in the, in the church, in the body of Christ. Amen. You can say to someone and say, I was their brother and the Lord healed me. You have a testimony. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. This morning I encourage you. Amen. Go and pay your debt. You know we all have a debt today. And the debt is to preach the gospel. Amen. We are debtors to the cross of Calvary. Amen, to preach his gospel. This morning I encourage you. Jesus said in Matthew 28, an 18th verse, amen, in Mark, the 16th chapter, and this 15th verse, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Amen, go ye into all the world and preach my gospel. Make disciples. And the 20th verse, in the 16th chapter of Mark, it says there, and God confirmed the word with signs and wonders to establish his word. Amen. One thing God gave us. He's not going to ask you what job you had, what house you built, what car you drove around in. He's not going to ask you. What did you store up on this earth? He's not going to ask you. What did you do upon this earth? Did you preach my gospel? Did you preach my gospel? Go and pay your debt. Let's all stand this morning. <clears throat> Let's all stand this morning. Let's all stand this morning. <clears throat> we have a debt to pay. <clears throat> and that is to preach the gospel. Nothing else in this world. <clears throat> Go and be. <clears throat> Testify of me. Go and preach my gospel. This morning I encourage you. It's his cross. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that are perishing. But to them that are saved, it is the power of God. No matter where you are, whatever nation you're listening to. This morning, this preaching. Preach the gospel because Jesus is coming soon. And this gospel must be preached. This is the good news. And this morning, we don't serve a dead God, we serve a living God. And this is the good news. This is the way, this is the way, the truth, and this is the life. Jesus came into this world, he died for us. He shed his blood for us and he rose again on the third day. And he's seated on the right hand of the Father, <coughs> interceding on behalf of us. And he said, I will do my, your work and you do my work. I will go. In my father's house, there are many mansions that I go and prepare a place for you. And the only thing that he has asked us to go into the world and preach his gospel. Since I encourage you, wherever you are, you are a preacher. You might be in a hospital, you might be a nurse, you might be a teacher. Wherever you are, you make an impact upon people. You got to tell people without compromise that Jesus Christ is the true and the living God. We are a light to the religions. Amen. This is not religion, this is reality. Jesus came into this world. And this morning I encourage you. We preach his gospel. We preach his love. We preach his grace. We preach about his blood. We preach about his cross. Because he has commanded us to go into the world and preach his gospel. 
So wherever you are, if God's told you, or God is telling you to go back and preach, be obedient. Be obedient. The whole village was in famine. But no one came with a little pot at least to fill it up. This morning in Sheffield, there are many empty pots. There are many empty pots that are without oil, without the word of God and without the Holy Spirit. God's filled you up that you might be a blessing to others. We make an impact upon people that we come in contact with. We are contagious people. A Christian is a contagious person. We have the love of Jesus. Amen. We make an impact upon people that we come in contact with. And this morning I encourage you. Amen. What do you have in your house? Never be ashamed of what Jesus did for you and for me 2017 years ago on the cross of Calvary. No man liveth for himself and no man died for himself. If he lives, he lives for the Lord. And if he dies, he dies for the Lord. For we are the Lord's. You were bought with a price. So glorify God, God in your body. Today you're living, it's because of his grace and his mercy that he showed towards us on the cross of Calvary. Glory to your Lord Jesus. I would like to pray. We serve a God of the impossible. Father, you know what we lack in our hearts and our minds and in our families. We serve a God of the impossible. And this morning, Lord, in the word that we have sown, we believe it will bring back fruit to you. Father, we come against every attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We bind and break in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing come upon your children, believing that they have received it, Lord. What they have done, they lack in their minds, in their bodies, in their hearts, Lord. Fill, Lord. Fill, Lord. Let the anointing come upon your children this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Those who you want to pray, Pastor Jim. Hallelujah. You know, um, I don't joke when I say I've seen healings. And I, I have seen amazing healings. And uh, I just feel that this morning as the presence of God is that we have to fill our boots this morning with the oil of Christ. And I feel that this morning that, uh, you know, doubt is, 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 is an enemy in, in the Christian life. And uh, if we allow it to be our God, if we allow it to be our number one in life, it will always be. Um, distract us from moving forward and I want to take away that doubt this 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 morning I mean Hamilton's preached an amazing message and I really do believe that if we step out in faith to see this morning that something's going to happen in the miraculous to, to people here so I, I don't want to leave this opportunity I don't want him to go and then we, we all go home but I want to give this opportunity for people to be healed this morning in a great and wonderful way. So I, I'm going to ask you to come up and be like one of those lepers who came up and gave, just gave thanks. And also for those who want to step in a gap for somebody else. Um, like the centurion. The centurion, you know, he didn't, um, he didn't, um, Jesus didn't go with the centurion. He stead, stepped in the gap uh, for his servant. And uh, there's nothing wrong with stepping in the gap for somebody else. We're going to pray for power of healing to come upon people and people in this church. I don't want to leave this opportunity. And those people out there today, this, this, this morning, uh, you know, it's not 
it's not a man that does the healing. We know that. It's not us who does the healing. In fact, the, the Bible talks about it as a gift that is given to certain people. Um, you are Christians, are you not? I don't think there's anybody that's not here. Everybody's here, face is here, is, is familiar to me. Why don't you put your hand out to these people as well? And we will agree together as a community of people for breakthrough. It says in the Bible very simply in Isaiah, surely, surely he's borne our sins, carried our sorrows. And yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, by his stripes, it's now. It wasn't 2,000 years ago, it's now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Hamilton, would you just like to pray? And I'm going to get... He is your your healer. He is your provider. He is your sustainer this morning. He is your provider. And this morning I encourage you. We are just going to agree with you. For God's provision upon your life. For God's healing upon your life. I always believe when you have the healer, you don't have to look for healing. The healing comes looking for you. When you have the provider, the provision comes looking for you. When you have the blesser, the blessing comes looking for you. We don't have to look for things. Things will come looking for us. And this morning, we're just going to intercede, help you out. Amen. Agree with you. Come, Brother Anthony. Come, Pastor Jim. Amen. Glory to your Lord. Crudo Ramande Kamishida Mande. Rivalesh Sharabastu Kamande. I would like some elderly people, Amen, or those who are just come behind them and just put your hands upon them. Amen to as we pray. Glory to your Lord Jesus. Chris and Brenda, would you just come up and pray as well? Rika Mastu Kamandre Kamishida Basi. Mary, Lord, let the anointing come upon my sister, Lord. Receive in the name of Jesus. Listen, increase our faith. Thank you, Lord. Receive in the name of Jesus. Just relax in the name of Jesus. For He is your provider. Come and pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come and, come, come and pray. Just lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, just a touch from you. Come to the front and just pray. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. you are our provider. You are our sustainer, Lord. Receive it in the name of Jesus, the anointed. Oh, glory. Come and, come glory, and Lord. Hallelujah. Father, the more of you. More of you, Lord. These hands, Lord. Thank you, Lord. More some of you, Lord. Let your anointing come on um, and touch my sister. More, you can't Lord. Sleep at touch night your voice, time. Lord. You, you that she begin, bad Lord, dreams, maybe, to worship you, Lord. You just can't get to sleep. Lord, the Lord wants to, to, Lord. Lord wants to, to Lord. Lord. minister to others, Lord. Put his hand touch upon you this hands, evening. Lord. Touch his hands, Lord. This morning, just to help you sleep. To give you peace that passes every understanding. If you need prayer for that, would you come forward as well? He wants Lord, to give we you pray, a, Lord, for a miracle, a Lord. Great night's a miracle, sleep. Lord. 
Rile Kamacharabasidamande. Lord, a miracle for this family. We believe for a miracle, Lord. More of you, Lord. Chris, can you come up to the front? If you guys come up here, just pray for these guys as well. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Anthony, just if you pray on this side. Thank you, Lord. Steve, can you pray for these guys at the end? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Brenda, would you come to the front? If you come to the front, just pray. Thank you, Lord. Walter, Walter, would you come and pray? If you come and pray to for those over here, just come over here and pray. Come and pray. Just start the front way. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come and pray. Come on, this power in the name of Jesus this morning. Thank you, Lord. Brian, you should come up and get prayed for. Let Hamilton pray for you. Reg, you, you come up to be prayed for? You come up to get prayed for? anointing will be upon his life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ruka Masi, Rebashire Masi. Rika Meshile Masura Bande. Glory to your Lord Jesus. The Lord is saying you have gone through things in life. But he wants you to know as you put your burdens, you cast your burdens upon the Lord for he cares for you. They seal it with your precious blood. Heal and power and virtue in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Father, the name of Jesus, make him an instrument. Well, Lord, while used and build in the hand. prayer is going on, we're going we're gonna to be singing as well. We're going to just worship him. Should we also stand as well? Use him, Lord. Use him, Lord. And have the worship team up here as well. We lift in charge. One thing. Father, I thank you. One God and God alone. One cross, one grace, one name that saves.